Hey there, good people. This is Stocks, Cryptos, and Investment News with Josh. There Will Be Blood. That's an entertaining movie about the boom and bust of the oil industry back in the last century. It got me thinking about this week ahead of us with big tech earnings. I'm going to share my expectations for this week as well as what trades that I've been thinking about over the weekend. Before we begin, I want you to check out this clip from CNBC on tech earnings ahead of us this week. Well, you've got Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Accuse. Well, the market's telling me today I need to be most worried about Facebook. But I'm not so sure if Snap and Twitter are a, are, are a true through read through Facebook. But I'll just say the market doesn't like the stock. So I'm definitely most concerned about that. I think the market, what I'm more interested in, less concerned, is on Apple. And in tech in general, Scott, 45% of tech revenues are overseas. And so with China, you need to see, with Apple, you need to see how they're going to navigate China and not just the dollar, but like China, the consumer. Because, you know, China's having a housing issue. They're having COVID lockdowns. They're having, you know, a real slowdown there. So I, I'm more interested to hear about how they're navigating it. But definitely, I would say that um, Meta or Facebook next week uh, is going to be, I think, cause me the most agita um, going, into the, going into the week. So this lady is an options trader and an options strategist, and her opinion is that there's probably going to be less volatility in Apple, but Facebook, man, aka Meta, is gearing up to get crushed, perhaps. That was her opinion. The biggest takeaway was that China is 40 plus percent of these big tech companies, and she views that as a problem because we, as we know, there's been a lot of problems in China. We're gonna break that down a bit more, but before I begin, please take a minute and hit that like for me. Remember that my videos are for educational purposes. Watch out for the scammers in the comment section impersonating me. I won't ask you guys to contact me on WhatsApp, Instagram, or Telegram. The goal of my page is to make this trading investment thing more simple for all of you. And I know that as I do that, I will become a better trader as well. If that's for you, then hit that subscribe and the notification bell and join the family. So the markets have gained about 10% since hitting lows on June 16th. I told you guys yesterday that a financial D-Day is coming this Thursday. July 28th, we're going to get the release of the GDP report. The economists are expecting 1% or more. I told you that the big five tech giants will be releasing their earnings this week. It's been the tech giants that have been propping up the market. And if they don't show good numbers, then watch out below. So the more I've been looking at the markets, the more I am not expecting good news. I think we're going to see that there's been a general pullback in advertising in the overall economy. U.S. companies are moving to cash. Think for a minute about that. Don't we already know that that's true? The dollar has been getting stronger because everybody is raising cash. Tesla, for example, sold 75% of their Bitcoin. The reason that they gave is they were concerned about not having enough cash on hand ahead, yet again, for problems coming out of China. This is why cash has been so strong. If you're going into a recession, are you going to be increasing your advertising? I don't think so. So let's talk about the markets overall. Everyone has been talking about the Fed and the interest rate hike. And I think that everybody has already priced in the risk of inflation and the interest rate hikes. That is not going to be the big market mover moving forward. That's the reason why in the first six months of this year we had such a bad pull to the downside. The markets went down 20 percent. It was because of the interest rate hikes and the fear of inflation. But that's not really the problem that we have right at this moment. What the markets have not really priced in is a recession, nor associated credit risks. Remember, we've already been seeing companies like Tesla, Apple, and Coinbase cutting their employee hiring, okay? So they're not, they're not bringing on new hires. That's one step in getting ready. Step two is to cut the people you have. Let's define recession in simple terms. That's when all companies have decreasing sales. Decreasing sales means layoffs. Layoffs mean people don't pay their bills, and that's when the problem rolls into the credit risk factor. So I don't believe that all of the recession fears and all of the credit risk fears have been priced into the market right now. I believe that the only thing that's really been priced into the market is the inflation problem and the 
rise of the interest rates. What would it look like if the market had to price in recession and credit risk? It could mean another 25% down from here. So what would that look like ahead? And should you be investing at all right now? Well, for me, the answer is there's always, always money to be made by the magic money printing machine that is Wall Street. But how and where should you be considering to put your money? That's, that is the far more complicated subject. Well, on the conservative side, number one, I just want to remind you all, you can always invest in bonds. Bonds are currently paying 9.6%. I know they're not sexy, but you can raise cash by leaving it in bonds until the market bottoms out, and then you can invest in stocks later. If you're interested in bonds, please let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to break that down into a more comprehensive video. Number two, you could park your money in some dividend paying stocks. I'm going to give you guys a couple that I'm in. You know that I'm in Enterprise Product Partners ticker EPD. I shared that with you guys last week. They have a dividend yield of 7.6%. I also am in Citio Royalties, ticker STR. They have a dividend yield of 10.35% with a 50% potential upside to the stock. And one of my other favorites is New Star Energy, ticker NS which has a dividend yield of 11.09% with an upside in the stock price of potentially 30%. And number three, you could hedge your investments with a short position using the SQQQ. Well, I told you guys yesterday about the video I did on the TQQQ and the SQQQ, too many Qs. What these are, are triple your money 3X leverage ETFs, okay? The TQQQ is the one that goes long on the NASDAQ. Going long means that you're expecting it, the NASDAQ to go up. So what I'm looking at right now, this next week, is the SQQQ, which is a triple your money, 3X leveraged short position on the NASDAQ. Now, let me remind you that buying either of these is just like buying a stock. There's nothing special to it. It's not like shorting stock because you can't lose more than you have invested. And it's not like puts that can expire worthless in like 30 days sometimes. If you bought $1,000 of the TQQQ, you would have $2,000 right now, just in the time frame from when I made my last video about it to today. And moving forward, if the big tech is bearish the way that I am kind of viewing it might be, then we could turn right around this week and look to short big tech with the SQQQ if the earnings begin to come in bad. If you've never traded the QQQs, then I would only try with a small position to start, whatever you could afford to lose. I wouldn't take a position until we see how this week plays out. And remember, even if you're gonna play with something like $100, uh, you know that I wouldn't just dump in $100. I would initially break that up into at least four orders. I would place four $25 orders. And the reason why is it's just remarkable when you put some money into a stock in any kind of a play, the very minute that you invest money, you're getting a new set of eyes. I've always found this phenomenon amazing that you know you can be really excited about an opportunity, but when you put in the money, all of a sudden, it's like you see it differently. You see the potential to the downside a bit more clearly. That's another reason why I love to break up my investments. I love to roll into them and roll out of them. All right, but we should have a pretty good idea by Thursday market close what to expect and where to take these positions. You can follow my trades and join my small account challenge. You know I'll leave a link in my the top pinned comment for Moomoo where I do my swing trading. Uh, they have the max 16 hours extended trading as well as the conditional order types that I need to get my trades right. They offer it a chance at a bunch of free stock, but you have to put in at least $100 to get the six free stock that they're currently offering. If you don't wanna miss out on my crypto and my stock picks, then hit that subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Have a restful day, bye-bye.